at a time when there seems to be an almost continuous stream of bad news and depressing items, it was great that over the weekend there emerged from the demonstrations in London a picture which I suspect will become iconic in many ways of a black man carrying on his shoulders uh, an injured white man who had been uh, at a rival protest and by all accounts in the conversations afterwards it would seem that he was being saved from really very considerable danger and serious injury. So it was a great sight of cooperation and a great moment where the common humanity uh, triumphed over rival views of the world. But behind that scene and that picture lies, I think, something deeper still. And what it suggests to me is that there is always the possibility of redemption. That actually we can be seen in the whole for who we are and not judged just by, as it were, the worst thing we've ever done, or for that matter, by the best thing we've ever done, but rather that we are a mixture. And part of the concern that I think a number of people have at the moment in our secular age is that there is less and less room for redemption, uh, that we are judged in the here and now, very often on social media, with very little chance for making amends, for receiving uh, forgiveness, in a way even for asking for it. So that picture to me is a triumph of common humanity, but a picture too of the possibility of redemption. So much of the agonising issues around Black Lives Matter stem, quite understandably and rightly, from the history of slavery. And if we're talking about slavery and redemption, we end up, it seems to me, talking about amazing grace. John Newton, a slave trader who discovered redemption and wrote the hymn. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. The possibility of redemption, it's there for us all, and it's the heart of our faith. Amen.